This is Left Side of the Brain. What's up, Jaguars? How y'all doing? Fall semester, back in full effect, like I promised y'all. I was gonna do another video today. And today's topic was a video, was a topic I was uh, touching on. And I promised to deliver this topic. And the name of this topic is the whole theory, the whole theory. And size does not exist. So I'm, so I'm going to do two in one right now. The whole theory and size doesn't or don't exist. Now, what do I mean by all of this? I know it sounds strange, what am I talking about? A whole theory. As a matter of fact, I want to get somewhere peaceful right now. I'm gonna walk this way because I don't like these, the, the, the arrangement of people around me. You see, while I'm walking, I'll talk about it. It's a certain arrangement of things. See, when you get super sentient to things like I have become, Everything will begin to make sense. Like I don't even walk certain places. If if the if the maze doesn't look right, if the people don't, if they're not standing in the proper con coordinates, I don't walk in that direction. I mean, I don't think y'all really get what I'm saying now somebody may say I'm paranoid or it's paranoia but no that's not it I feel I feel things I have to walk through the maze in a certain way to avoid certain energies and you know Pac-Man certain ghosts I have to avoid them because these people, man, even the most innocent looking situations can be very violent. Even as I speak now, see, everything doesn't have to have sharp claws or long teeth for it to be dangerous. You see what I'm saying? So I think I'm going to come to this spot right here because... I'm evading a web of deception and entanglement. Now I feel better. See what I'm saying? I feel clutter, clutter free and worry free. I left all of that behind. Even though they was just swinging and out here with the kids or whatever, I still didn't feel right around them. Because like I said, everything that looks innocent, it's not always... Like a mouse falling for a cheese, falling for a piece of cheese on a mouse trap. It looks innocent until he gets snapped and his neck get broken. You see what I'm saying? But anyway. Let's get into it. Now. The whole theory. And it's about to rain too. I felt the rain drop, but it's all good. The whole theory is this, and size does not exist. This is fall semester. Now, let's talk about molecules and atoms. For you to understand what I'm saying. Now, imagine your eyes are a microscope. You with me? Imagine your eyes are a microscope. Let me pick up something to make this to give you a better okay this rock for instance you see this rock this rock better yet a donut let's say a donut now a donut is in is in the shape of a ring right a ring now imagine imagine the ring, imagine my hand is a donut. 
Imagine this is a ring, the donut ring. The center hole, you see the light, the sun. You see the sun in the middle. So all of this, all of that inside of the hole, that's empty. That's not a hole, that's empty. Even though we call it a donut hole, the donut itself would be the dough. The dough doesn't have a hole in it. But then again, it does. The, even the donut ring is full of holes. And did I just contradict myself in that statement? Yes, I did. What did we say on this channel before? These words that we use are in a loop. They are looped. And they are made to collide with each other. So you will use words trying to explain something. And you will find yourself making a contradiction. Because these words that we use were not given to us to give us the absolute truth. Okay? So they will always collide into themselves. But for a lack of a better way to convey what I'm saying... We'll just have to use the words that we have. So this is the donut. This is the donut. My hand. You see this brown hand? This is the donut ring. Imagine my hand is donut the dough. The center, we say, is a donut hole. But that's not a hole. That's space. That's space within the ring or basically you can look through the space 360 degrees of space that's created by the donut ring which creates a peephole so you see that peephole you're looking through that's not a hole that's space the donut ring it also contains space my hand is full of pores. See these pores on my hand? Pores are holes. Okay? Pores are holes. Now, the more you zero in on the donut ring, it will be, you will see more and more and more tiny holes. You can count the holes. This is going to be hard to explain. You got to just try your best. You can count the holes. Right? But the more you zero in, you will find out that. Okay, let me give you an example of what I'm saying. Okay, you ever play with those wonder bubbles? And you blow the bubble and the bubble connects to another bubble and it'll be two bubbles floating around. That's what I'm saying. Like when you zero in on the donut ring itself, you will see that there are holes within the donut ring. So what you was calling a hole. Before you zeroed in on the donut ring was not even a hole in the donut ring. That was just this 360 space circumference around the around the um well on the insides of the ring in in 360 directions that you were looking through but that was just space and you can move that the space didn't move see the donut ring that's not the donut hole that's just the space Look, if I move it right there, it changes, you see? But it's still the donut ring. So, as you zero in on the donut ring, you will see, if you had a microscope, it would be more holes. You'll see holes, like pores in my skin. The donut ring has pores. When you break the donut open and you look at the dough, you'll see, like when you... When you slice through bread and you see the air bubble pockets okay if you did that with the donut ring you'll see the air bubble pockets 
the more you zero in on the air pockets, you will see that there is a hole that you can see under the microscope that you can't see with the naked eye. And the more the and the more powerful the microscope is, the more holes you will be able to see. And then that keeps going and going and going to the smallest percentage that it can go, which would be an atom. Okay? And even that atom has holes. You see what I'm saying? But they they are so tiny that you have to almost theorize about it. Because a lot of things in physics is, is theoretical. But the point is this. The hole is divided by a, a tiny barrier. Just like the bubble. When the bubble connects the wonder bubble the water has a surface tension to it. This is you can look this up in in physics. Water has a certain elasticity to it or what they call surface tension. So when the two bubbles connect, they are connected by that sticky surface tension. But there are holes even where the bubbles touch. Even though they are connecting, there are still holes. And they are held together by the fact that one hole is sticking on a smaller hole. It's only held together because if, if two holes of the bubble came and met each other the bubble would pop so they are stick together by they are stuck together by one hole count kind of like I, I, let, me, let me let me okay it's like this they stuck together like this one hole is like this and it's kind of like this. So it's able to stick. But if it, if it came just like this. The bubble would pop. But because it's like this. Throughout the bubble. Holes are. Sticking. Surface tension. Because of the different sizes of the holes within the bubble. But if all of them met like this. And when they do eventually meet like this, as the liquid begins to dissolve, this is what happens. As the holes spread and become larger, then they just meet like this, and that's when the bubble pops. That's when the bubble happens to pop. Do y'all get that? Do y'all understand that? Like, the bubbles happen, happen to pop when... When they slide, like one size fits directly over a bubble, like a lens. Like when you go get your eyes examined and they, once that lens come down and it's right over the lens and the doctor say, can you see now? That's what I'm saying. When the bubble does that and the lens flips and comes directly over the other lens, that's when the bubble pops. But if the lens is halfway like that, it's sticking own surface tension of another bubble another hole that may not be the exact same size and that's what allows it to stick together do y'all understand what i'm saying but when but when it fits that's when it's like a key like a key going into a keyhole and that's when the bubble pops or opens up completely like when you put a key in the key door it fits perfectly and it opens up completely. You see what I'm saying? Or better yet, let me give you another example. It's like 
it's like if I was standing and I don't want to over expand, basically like this. You see these bars right here? I can't fit through this because I'm I'm physically too large to go through this. But when it but if this expands to the size that I am, I can fall through. But as long as I can, but as long as it's like this, I can lean on it and it can support me. That's what I'm saying. When you zero in on that bubble, the holes are different sizes. But when they meet each other, they the bubble pops. Because the, the surface tension of the of the water, it no longer has anything to support the bubble. You see what I'm saying? The air and the molecules. So eventually it just pops. That's what I'm saying. So basically, when you zero in and you keep zero and you keep zero inning, when you keep um, zero inning on on the bubbles and the holes, you'll find out that in between each bubble, there are more holes. And the wall between every room which separates the whole which gives you a definition or a defining shape of the whole when you zero in on the wall you will realize that it's just full of holes microscopic holes right just like your bedroom is next to your little brother or sister bedroom or the master bedroom is next to uh, the family room or whatever it's only separated by a wall right so what I'm saying is that wall itself is full of holes you see what I'm saying it's no such thing as a hole being completely covered up even paint has holes all throughout it they just very 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 microscopic you see what I'm saying? And what I'm getting at is this. The more you zero in, the more you realize that the, the connection or the wall is not really, it's not really, it's not really there. Because the whole thing is a whole. That's what I'm saying to you. The whole thing is a whole. So therefore, what you're seeing is just vibrating holes that's moving around. But the walls between each hole has holes in it itself. And it, it just keeps going on until it reaches an infinity amount of holes. It's not... It's never a point in a in a wall where there are not holes. So down to the they don't even have a, a ruler that can measure it, how tiny the holes are. But as you keep zeroing in and zeroing in and zeroing in, what happens is you see things for what it really is, and you will see that. There is no hole. There are, there are no numerous holes. It's just one big hole with no edges to it. So holes don't exist. Like, it's infinite. That's why they say, like, the universe doesn't have no edges to it. It don't have no, it's not in a box. It's, it's infinite because it doesn't have a hole. It's not a hole. It doesn't have a wall. It doesn't have a ceiling. It doesn't have a top. It doesn't have a bottom. Like, the reason why you think you're looking at a solid object is because we see things slow down. We see things slow down. 
You see what I'm saying? Things are really moving faster than what our eyes can pick up. So, so in order for us to see things, it's actually slowed down. I'm, I might not be making sense to some of you. You might not understand. That's why I'm saying to listen. You might have to listen to this twice. Like, for instance, let me let me explain to you. Like, like everything we see is in the past. Okay. It's like your brain sees things upside down. And it projects it right side up. But there is a billion of a nanosecond where the light has to reflect off of the object and then it has to bounce off the object and then come back through your eye lens and go through the process. And all of this is happen happening in billions and billions of a second. But even that short billionth of a second is drag. It's drag that's taking place. And that drag means you are living in the past. But you don't know you're living in the past. To you, it's actually taking place, but your eyes, the light has already bounced off of the object that you are looking at but it's just now going into your mind and you are just now processing it and your brain slows it down when it's processed it's slowed down your brain slows it down in the processing because things move at what the speed of light When, it, when it's captured by your brain, it's slowed down. The velocity of the light is slowed down. So your brain catches it, it's upside down, and then it projects it right side up. But it slows it down. So that's why you think that you are looking at the object that's in front of you. Because it's slowed down, it's frozen. In time. And you are. Behind the moment. That's in front of you. You're always a step behind. Everything that you are watching. Always. So you are always. For all intents and purposes. You are always in the past. Okay. And. But to you, if you never thought about it like that, you think you're living in the now. You are living in the now in the sense of while all this is taking place, you're still in the now. But you are catching the moment that you are looking at and you are a billionth of a second behind everything that you are watching. Okay. And the only time you are in the now is when your eyes are closed. As soon as you open your eyes up, you behind. You behind what's going on. Because it takes a, it takes a moment of time for that light to reflect and bounce back to you. And who's to say how much time that moment is? That moment could very well be billion, billions of years. Because you got to look at it like this. To God, like it's even in the Bible like this. To God, a second to God is like a year. When you think about how much distance it is, it takes to travel from one galaxy to the next. You will understand what I'm saying. That's why they have a thing called light years. So you might be thinking, oh, well, what you're saying, left side, it's just a billionth of a second. That's because you're thinking about it from your 
slow down time perspective. But when you leave this galaxy that you live in, if you were to to travel across the universe, you will understand that things operate differently on a quantum physics level. So that billionth of a second in this slow down realm could really be billions of years somewhere else in the galaxy. You see what I'm saying? Like, we are under um, uh, it's like this. They say when you um, space travel, right? For you to understand what I'm saying, it's like going through a black hole. They say when you get on the edges of a black hole, time, like, you, you, before you go into a black hole, it's like time slows down. And you be, you spinning around the, the perimeter of the black hole, and then you go in it, and then you come out of it, and don't even realize that a hundred years went by, and you don't even realize. If you came back to Earth, everybody that you once knew would be dead. Because your time, your, your concept of time, it, it became distorted. See, right here on Earth, time, it means something else in contrast to if you was on another planet, if you was in another planet or something. Okay, because we, the way we measure time is different, what I'm saying. So, to put it all in a nutshell, what we call a billionth of a second. In comparison to eternity, in comparison to eternity, that billionth of a second is a billion years. So essentially, but in your life, we measure time by change. Change, like how long does it take for ice to melt? So if I put this ice under a candle flame, and I put on a timer, a clock. How we measure time is by change. Change within a given span of time. So how long does it take for, for a cube of ice to melt? And we'll measure the change, the, the ice melting. So that's how we define time, okay? But you, you take away the... Uh, The factors of determining the amount of change. And let's just put yourself in infinite darkness. Where time. Doesn't really exist. Okay. But let's just say for all intents and purposes. You just put a clock on the wall. And it's just spinning. Turning. Turning. And the only, only thing you hear is hearing is a tick tock. Tick tock. That billionth of a second that it takes for light. To. Reflect off an object in comparison to the universe and how long it's been here. What I'm saying is a hundred years of you living would still be a second to eternity. Maybe not even a second, a fraction of a second. It gets to the point since it has been here since eternity. The time that you have spent on this earth. It don't even equal up to nothing because nothing can compare. No time can compare to eternity, which cannot be affected by change. OK, darkness, like we say. Nothing can mess up the state of darkness. Darkness in the universe is unchangeable. It's immutable. It is not. It's the only thing that you can't create an artificial darkness. You can't create an artificial darkness. So time has no effect on it. You see what I'm saying? So the time you spend on this earth is really nothing because you can't compare it to 
eternity. You get what I'm saying? Okay, I thought I was the only person out here. Still some people here, so I'm good. That's a part of the organic portal. You know, if I'm out at the park by myself, then I'm crazy, right? But if somebody else is here, then I'm okay, according to the authorities. But if I'm here by myself, I'm a creep. Isn't that how they think? Right. So that's just an example of, you know, how the world operates. I had to look around to see if I'm still looking like I'm a part of the, the way things flow in this world. If I'm here by myself, the park ranger come. What you doing in this park by yourself? But if I'm here after hours and other people are here, it's okay then. You see what I'm saying? So there's really no right or wrong in this thing. It's just if enough people is doing it, then it's okay. If you're doing it by yourself, you got to be breaking the rules. He got to be doing something. He got to be up to something. Why? Because I'm here by myself? But that's a side note. Now, so as you see... Since our little time spent cannot affect or it has no comparison to eternity. This, the video is about to cut short. Um, I'm going to stop it right here and I'm going to go into part two because the video is about to stop anyway. I'm running out of time for space. I'm about to do part two now. This is left side of the brain. Time. The whole theory holes don't exist. Part two coming up next.